What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here. Welcome back to, what is this? Four Fire Reds, One Controller. I've been putting off doing the commentary for this video for almost a week now because I have bronchitis. So, couldn't talk. Thanks to uh, all the old and young relatives at Thanksgiving. One of you got me sick. These bastards. Anyway, this video is going to be hard and fast, like like a, like a good YouTube video should be. Oh, I'm so exhausted, y'all. <laughs> I'm just so tired. It has been uh, it's been a long week, but it's finally Friday night. I got some time. I'm going to record this. My voice is feeling well enough. Uh, basically, I kind of felt like this series. We've kind of seen almost everything that, that this challenge is going to present us with. I think the, the areas we've gone through, the gyms we've done, the battles and stuff, it's all really, like, w we get the idea, you know? So it's just going to be more of the same for the rest of the gym leaders. And the next big challenge is going to be the Elite Four. So I'm kind of eager to just get to that. So in this video, we're going to do five gyms <laughs> in a half an hour. Uh, we just did the fighting dojo, which doesn't technically count, but they gave us a Hitmonchan, which is fun. I always like to pick it, even though it's terrible in Gen 3 and I never use it. So here's Golbat. Uh, he's got max friendship with me now, so whenever I give him a rare candy, he tries to evolve. But uh, because we don't have the national decks yet, we just get this question mark message. I remember getting that as a kid and being so confused, like, what? Why does my Golbat keep trying to evolve and failing? What am I doing wrong? Come to find out it wasn't anything I was doing. Things have been crazy lately, y'all. We had D&D uh, &D canceled both nights this week. I played D&D &D twice a week with some cool people. And uh, canceled both nights because I was sick. Megan's been sick. The, the kitten is teething, we think, because she is, or at the very least, she's got like a loose tooth or something because she has this desire to bite <laughs> that is unlike anything I've ever seen in a kitten before. I mean, kittens will chomp on you when they're playing, but this, this cat will run up to you, grab you with both paws, and then just bite your toes. <laughs> just like, what the fuck? <laughs> anyway... Someone in the comments told me that the reason the elite or the rival battle in Pokemon Tower is so easy is because they intend you to go here, make it up to the point where you hit the Marowak, and then hit a wall, turn around, and then there's a sign outside that says, like, need to see a ghost? Go to Silphco, <laughs> basically. It says something about, like, Silph Company provides your your needs for Aster, I forget what it says, but it basically it says, go to Silphco. So then you're supposed to go to Silphco and do all that and come back. So you're not supposed to do the rival fight after Silphco, even though you would need the Silph scope in order to get to the top floor. Anyway, I didn't even show those grunt fights at the top. They are not challenging. The next actual battle is in Silphco. Wait a second. No, you don't get the Silph scope from Silphco. That always confuses me. You get the Silph scope from the rocket hideout. Your reward for beating Silphco is that the gyms open up and you get a Master Ball. So for Silphco, you can look it up online. It's got 11 floors in this building. Uh, I didn't do any of that shit. You only have to go to two of them. <laughs> I think you go to like the fifth floor and you go, the trick is you have to go in and out of one teleporter pad in order to like walk across it without teleporting. And then you find a key on the ground you fight, like, one grunt, and then you can go to floor, f I think, three, go through one teleporter, it takes you to seven, and you fight the rival. It's right there. There's, you have to do hardly anything if you just look up where to go. Whereas when I did this for, for fun on uh, my Pokemon Yellow playthrough that I played it through on my phone while I was, like, on airplanes and in waiting rooms, I tried to, like, full clear the whole place, so I eventually I stumbled across the card key and I just went around opening all the doors and fighting everybody and other than getting a lot more experience for your Pokemon you're not really missing much. I think there's a couple 
you know, there's like a guard spec and an X speed. It's like, it doesn't matter. You can skip it. So this rival fight poses a, a slightly, it's slightly more challenging than some of the previous ones just because his uh, starter is level 40. And uh, I mean, our War Turtle hasn't even fully evolved yet, for Christ's sake. He's up there just getting his ass kicked. Oh, at some point in this video, oh, I've already done it actually. You may have noticed I changed the the menu borders to match the color of the game. Isn't that cute? I realized after four episodes that I could do that, and it would be like just cute little matches. They red, green, yellow, and blue now. I was looking to leave the little circles in the corners because those menus aren't always on screen. In fact. It's a little weird that this main text box that you use for dialogue and the main text box that you use for battles both are not affected by that choice, which is weird. It seems like it should be. It's just strange to me. I feel like in yellow and, and red and blue it just changed like every border in the whole game practically. It might have even like messed with the tile set, I'm not sure. Although I think at that point, the only ones you had were um, like striped and checkers and stuff, because there wasn't really color in those games. So now we're fighting Giovanni, and Giovanni's teams range from like mediocre to good. He's got some quality Pokemon like Nidoking, Kangaskhan. Uh, he never bothers to evolve his Rhyhorn, which is disappointing. Of course, I think it evolves at like level 42 or something, so it wouldn't be in time for this fight anyway. Yeah, Dragonair up there. Doing work. Uh, turns out even at level 35, Dragon Rage is still a uh, two-hit KO and a lot of Pokemon. I mean, anybody that doesn't have a decent uh, HP stat is getting two-hit by that, and almost all Pokemon are going to be getting three-hit by a Dragon Rage at this level. It's pretty nice. It's also nice to have almost all of our Pokemon evolved. In fact, everybody will be fully evolved by the end of this video, and I actually end up throwing out a Pokemon in, in exchange for another because I realized I, <laughs> I realized I would, I'd forgotten to include an important type matchup for the Elite Four. So after all the playthrough versus it's going to be a last minute, uh, what would you even call it, substitution. Right right before the game, Coach blows the whistle and says, Yo, mystery Pokemon, get the fuck out of here, we're replacing you with Lapras. <laughs> so leave a comment down below, which game, and, or rather, which Pokemon do you think is going to get pulled at the last minute and replaced with a Lapras? I'll give you a hint, it's not one of the water types. All right, now that we've defeated Giovanni and Selfco, M Misty? No, Sabrina's gym is open. Sabrina, the teenage psychic. And her Pokemon all share uh, a common weakness for not only dark type moves, but also physical moves in general. So if our Golem can roll something higher than magnitude four, we can actually deal some damage here. But any high attack or special attack, hard hitting Pokemon is gonna have a pretty easy time with this. I also love Ninetales using fucking Will-O-Wisp against Venomoth when it's like the most obvious one shot with Flamethrower because I'm just looking at another screen, you know? Also, is Venomoth even a psychic type? Pretty sure that's bug flying, right? Gen 1, there's some severe limitations on certain types, like the only ghosts being the Gengar line. But... It's still not as bad as Gen 2 when they had the opportunity to add more Pokemon of those types. And for some types they did, but for others they didn't. And for the ones they did... That was me not sneezing into the mic, you're welcome. Uh, and for the types that they did add new Pokemon, half the time they didn't even fucking use them. Like, the first gym leaders just got a Pidgey. And then you end up with, uh... Like, so many of the gym leaders don't even have Johto Pokemon, man. I was like, shouldn't you have added some more ghosts, bruh? Outside of, uh... 
the gym here, just on the other side of Saffron City, there's Mr. Psychic's house. He's just a guy who has a psychic TM and he gives it out to anybody who asks. Look at that, you can play the polka flute. I even put the polka flute music in for you guys. I hope you all have been enjoying the uh, variable background music in these videos. It has taken longer to put together than I would have thought. I've actually manually spliced together looping versions of a lot of these tracks to just make it kind of blend into the background the way that it does when you're playing the game. And uh, hopefully you haven't been noticing it. Hopefully it's just like quiet, like perfect background and it just makes you feel like you're playing Pokemon, like Gen 3 vibes, you know? But uh, for that polka flute one, I wanted to point it out because <laughs> it's probably the only point in the game where you get to hear that music. Also, so we got the Lapras in Silphco there. We got the Eevee also. We got the Hitmonchan, and now we've got the Snorlax in all four games. So a couple games are already using an evolution. Uh, nobody's going to use Hitmonchan or Snorlax, at least not in the current plan, which is probably the final plan. Uh, but. Like I said, someone's gonna use Lapras. Take a guess who's getting cut for Lapras. This guy is the word I thought I could get to earlier. He gives out the Super Rod. Now that we have the Super Rod, we have access to some new encounters. But firstly, we'll catch a Ghastly in Pokemon Tower. I'm gonna drink some drink. My throat is still not at its best. In case y'all haven't figured out yet, I don't really do like, edited post-commentary when I do post-commentary. I kind of feel like once I get to the point where I'm trying to write down exactly what I want to say and, like, make a script, and it's, like, all the fun and spontaneity of my conversationalism will just disappear. So, even when I do post-commentary like this, I edit all the video and, and music, background music in, and then I just watch the video and talk over it. <laughs> You're just, this is just a reaction to my own video, and then... <laughs> The reaction content for me is the commentary you get. It's fucking weird. I wanted to call special attention to, to this moment here because now we have the Super Rod, we can go get a Super Rod encounter, and it turns out for both uh, games, red and yellow, we want to go fishing in Vermilion City. So I managed to go out to the shoreline, immediately fish up both of the Super Rod encounters I want, and then fucking double catch first try both of the new Pokemon for our team. So welcome what it's soon to be Cloyster and Starmie to the team. I do enjoy so many of the uh, early Gen 1 designs and Cloyster is one of them. And I believe these are both... Are they both Water Stone evolutions? Or is Staryu... Yeah, Staryu is a stone evolution to Starmie. I don't know if y'all, you probably haven't heard of it because it hasn't really been going around Twitter or anything, but there's a version of, it's kind of like Wordle, but with Pokemon, and instead of trying to, you're not trying to spell the name of a Pokemon, you're trying to guess a Pokemon based on its like type, or like maybe the region it's from or something. It's called Pokedoku. Uh, you can just sound it out and Google it, it's exactly what it sounds like. And uh, there's a new one every day. And it's this little 3x3 three three grid. So, like, across the top and side, there'll be descriptions of a Pokemon. And then you have to fill in the nine squares in the middle so that the two criteria that cross in that square are both fulfilled. So, like, it might be water type on one line and, like, stone evolution on one column. And where those cross, you could put a uh, cloister. Sometimes they get pretty difficult, especially for me with when they're asking about Megas and Gigantamax forms and such, because I don't, I don't know any of that shit. <laughs> I barely even, I don't even recognize some of the Pokemon that show up as options on there. Like, after you fill out the whole thing, you get one try at each, by the way. So you have to get, you have to nail every, every, all the nine squares first try uh, to get, like, a check mark for the day. But win or lose afterwards, you can go on there and, we're just getting the bicycle, by the way. You can go back on there and look and see what all the correct options you had were, and it'll give you a, a score based on how unique you were. So if you think the puzzle's a little easy and you know it's easy for you to think of a Pokemon that's a water type that evolves by a stone, and then, uh, you know, Lombre, uh, you can 
try and go for the most unique solutions and try and pick out the least, the one that no one else is going to think of, you know? Like, what's what's the water type that evolves by stone that the fewest people think of? Probably Lombre, because it's people don't think of it as a water type. Like when you say water type, you tend to think of just, like, the fish and stuff, not the hybrid grass guy from Gen 3. Which I think he might even evolve with a leaf stone and not a water stone, I'm not sure. Anyway, just west of Celadon City, there's a lady living in a house with a bird. I think that's a Spiro? It might be a Firo. And she gives you fly. So now we have fly. Fucking awesome. Alright, time for Koga. For whatever reason, the, the levels at this point of the game kind of... There's a weird plateau around 30, and then there's another weird plateau around 40. So our Pokemon right now, we're all in the 35 to 39 range. Which means on some games, we're kind of evenly matched, and on other games, we're actually a little bit underleveled for the gym, but... Honestly, just bringing six Pokemon gives us a, a fighting shot. Also, the introduction of abilities making uh, Coughing and Wheezing have Levitate is so sad. Because normally you just sweep this whole gym with anybody that can use Dig. <laughs> but now, now they fucking float, man. Also, we got Haunter. I don't know if I even showed him evolving. Haunter is so cool. I wish Gengar looked cooler. Because I feel like Haunter is such a cool looking Pokemon. And then Gengar doesn't really follow through. I don't know. He's kind of round. Not very scary either. Yeah, there's not much to say about uh, Koga. By the time you reach this point in the game, you can either just use Dig to kill all the Grimers and Mucks, and then hardly, basically anything will kill Coughing and Weezing. They're not particularly good Pokemon. And obviously, if you can catch a, yourself a Psychic type, this is an easy, easy victory. Well, time for our final starter to evolve. <laughs> now we're off to the Safari Zone. This was this was a challenge. Trying to get all four of these games <laughs> through the Safari Zone was a friggin' nightmare, dude. I left in the whole footage of this just so y'all could see. There's <laughs> there's so many encounters, and the path that you have to follow is so serpentine it becomes really difficult to just keep everybody together. And then at the same time, you've only got 600 steps to get to where you need to go. So you can't just constantly use extra steps to synchronize everybody. If things are kind of close, but not perfect, you gotta just try and go for it from there. So you may notice that the paths they're taking are slightly different from each other. Every now and then it'll hit a corner where you know, if you're just walking against a wall, it doesn't count as extra steps. You can actually sync everybody up that way. Interestingly, we're not even catching anything here. It's pretty rare for me to not... There's the gold teeth, by the way. That's the path you have to follow to get to them. Uh, it's pretty rare for me to play through one of these games and not take anything from the Safari Zone. Because there's a lot of good encounters here. I mean, you saw there's... You can catch a Nidoran here if you missed it at Mount Moon. There's Execute. You can get your Kangaskhan here if you want. Although I'd probably just use Snorlax if I wanted a normal type. Point being, I think there's also really good uh, stuff if you fish here with the Super Rod. There we are, we have Surf now. So we've got, in this video, we've got Fly and Surf. We've beaten Sabrina and Koga. We've gotten some new encounters, and here's our last encounter on... Uh, Ooh, is that blue version up there? Yeah. He needs himself an electric type. So we're heading around by the north entrance of, uh, what's it called? Rock Tunnel. And we're gonna run around in the power plant until we find ourselves an electric type. No, not a Pikachu. I'm talking one of those with the big magnets and shit. Yeah, there he is. Magneton. And this is a, I guess we're finally at the point where we're at the right level for the game because... <laughs> We're running into wild Pokemon that are level 34. Our team is level 30-something. 
So there it is, the world's best Pokemon design. Three Magnemite stuck together. Oh, also, now that we have Fly, I taught Fly to somebody on every team. It just works out that every team had someone who could learn it all completely legitimately. And then, now that we have Surf, it also turns out that we have somebody on every team who can learn Surf all completely legitimately. And uh, so now we can go surfing off to the south and uh, take on... I almost said Koga. No, Blaine. We're headed to Cinnabar Island. Oh, so I was surfing down here and I got caught by this fisher or this swimmer guy. And I figured I'll just wait until the others see me. And the guy at the bottom left took like a minute. This is, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, I don't know. His path must be like really random for him to have wandered that far off. And like, it makes me kind of question like, if I sat there with like 10 times speed up on and just drew a box around all the places I saw him go, like, does he have just a space that he moves randomly in? Does he have like a, like a motion function? Like two spaces this way, one space back or whatever? I also realized after we got the Cinnabar that we forgot to give the Warden his teeth. So we'll just go ahead and do that. Because <laughs> he gives us strength, which is a required HM to find our way uh, through the Victory Road later. And then we went to the basement of the Poga Mansion, pressed some buttons, jumped off a cliff, and uh, found Mewtwo. Wait, that's not right. No, we found the key to the gym. That's it. And then, uh, thankfully, because this gym... Oh, wait, wait, what's going on right now? I'm in the menus. What's happening? Just going up and down. Okay. Oh, I'm looking for the escape rope. <laughs> My menus don't line up, so I have to use them separately on the top and bottom halves. What? What? I'm not about to try and trace my steps out of there. Fuck that noise. You're using a escape rope to get out of a party at a mansion. I can relate. I just want to leave. I need like a trap door that opens up, takes me out to my car. So because in Blaine's gym we don't have to actually fight any trainers, because you, you can answer really easy trivia instead, we're just going to go straight to Blaine. And it turns out, having a Pokemon that can use Surf, this gym is so fucking easy. Like, eh. it's nuts. Of course, the top left game does have a little bit more trouble. We're gonna bring Golem in, and of course, we immediately catch a burn and get our attack halved. So this, and we miss, and it's oh, it's just embarrassing. Uh, but the games that are clicking, that are just clicking Surf, are doing really well. Luckily, Alakazam uh, is so strong it doesn't even. Oh, never mind. Alakazam's dead. I'll just bring in Charizard here. Yeah, if nothing else, just bring in a, uh, a Pokemon with a, the same type so you can just resist it for the most part. It's kind of interesting looking at the type chart. Growing up, I always thought that every type resisted itself except for Dragon, but actually a fair number of types deal neutral damage to themselves. It's kind of weird trying to figure out like which is which. It seems like mostly the special types resist themselves and the physical types don't. I don't know if it's a hard and fast rule or not. Oh, Arcanine. Arcanine's a scary Pokemon, man. If you could just catch a Paralysis, that would be great. No? Okay. Gotta bring in the Ape. But even on the uh, games that don't have a Water-type starter, uh, we're gonna find a way. Uh, hopefully. I mean... <laughs> maybe. Or we'll just get absolutely blasted by Fire Blast. That's also possible. You like the Alolan Haunter I found? Yeah, so we're going to try that again. So Surf's pretty good, but uh, having not fully evolved our Haunter means he's just going to die to basically any hard attack that hits him. Now we're hoping for a little slightly better luck on Rollout. And we again catch a burn and and die. It's like, come on, man! I'm supposed to just be able to sweep this gym with rollout. No, not get my attack halved and then immediately get killed. Anyway, another delightful use of quick attack there. I just like to look occasionally at the other screens that are not currently fighting the gym leader. Like, we beat the gym leader, 
And then we just go Blair Witch it in the corner of the room, <laughs> stand there for like two hours in game, while he just like nervously stays at his post like a like a Disney employee who's not allowed to move until the the guests leave. <laughs> like, this is so fucking funny to me. All right, I was I learned from uh, how fucking bad Haunter did in that gym that it's time to evolve his ass. Uh, it's weird too. A lot of the trade evolutions, they keep learning moves, the same moves at the same levels, even if you evolve them to the third stage right away. But stone evolutions, as soon as you evolve them, they don't learn shit after that. I have no idea why they decided to make that the trend, but there it is. Yeah, even my silhouette, it's like... Haunter's just so much spookier. The fact that he doesn't have feet, so he's just always floating around like a spooky ghost. The fact that Gengar looks kind of like purple Kirby. It's like Kirby if he ate a purple hedgehog. That would turn. That would make him look like Gengar. We've also got a Machoke who wants to become the Machamp. And uh, we're trying to become the Machamp of this region, so we're gonna we're gonna align those dreams. My choke is evolving! Why the fuck did I include this? Everybody knows what he's, what he's gonna turn into. It's not a mystery. I'm mad at me from two days ago who edited this. Everyone knows it's fucking Machamp, man. We all know the Pokey Rap by heart. You know the, you know the Pokey Rap, don't you? Alright, it's time for... What is this guy's name? Giovanni. We're gonna, uh... We're gonna send his mafia ass back to New York, kick him out of uh, Viridian City. Uh, this fight, I was gonna put the whole thing in, but then I realized it's just clicking surf. Uh, even more so than Blaine was just clicking surf. And it's kind of embarrassing that both this guy is both the leader of Team Rocket and the eighth gym leader, and his gym just folds to a move that you're required to have at this point in the game. It makes no sense to me. It's one shot. Just just a one shot. Oh, here comes the one more for Night of King. You guess what? It's fucking one shot in all four games. The only problem we have is when we run out of power points and we have to click Shadow Ball instead. And then I remember, oh fuck, Ghost is a physical type in this game, so that actually is not gonna do shit. So if I want to use Gengar's awesome special stat, I have to click on Psychic. Oh, well, keep thinking. There you go. Uh, yeah, you're gonna do it. Yes, good job. Good job, Past Poncho. You figured it out. That was me looking at the health meter, like, how did that do so fucking little? What the Oh right, Shadow Ball's physical in this gen. So yeah, that's Giovanni. What a chump. Alright. One last fight coming up here for the end of this battle, and then I want to give you the kind of heads up on where we're going next. So, obviously, all that's going to be left after this next rival fight is the Elite Four. So, the next video is going to be entirely live commentary, because I figure the one thing that we're still missing in this series that we haven't seen with four games, one controller, is... Is that music, like, really, really late? Check my audio timeline. Um, the one thing that we're missing still is hearing more of my thought process as I'm playing. So I'm going to do all live commentary for the Elite Four and the Champion, which I think is going to be the hardest fights. And I'm going to add some extra rules. Uh, like, I'm only going to consider it a victory if all four games can beat the Champion. So if any of the four games gets killed by an Elite Four member, all four are going to reset. And we won't be saving between uh, each member. So it's going to be like an actual proper challenge. And I'm at the point where I'm looking at like how the Switch AI works. I think for most of them it's not going to be necessary because they have all the Pokemon are the same type and have similar moves. So there's like, it just goes in the order of their team. But for the champion especially, considering he's got three different teams across four games, and I don't have any Pokemon in common, I'm going to try and figure out some kind of strategy to, like, leave an electric type, you know, kill the, the Pidgeot, and then who's he sending next based on who do I have in, 
and I'll have a good switch for that Pokemon in the second slot on every team or something like that. Uh, we'll see. I'm going to try to pre-plan as much as I can so that I don't have to improv everything on the fly, because at that point it'll be battle 5 out of 5, and if we screw it up we have to do them all over. This gym, or this rival fight before Victory Road is kind of a, a test drive of that. Of how does it go if I just wing it? And uh, surprisingly well. It turns out that the more advanced uh, the fights get, the more text appears on screen. Because you have effect, uh, attacks with different effects that have multiple stages or say multiple things. More statuses are proccing, uh, stuff like that. So it's a lot easier to get the text completely desynchronized, where I'm just picking moves one game at a time, basically, and just quickly cycling between the four of them. But uh, it's not too hard, honestly. It's also surprising to me, whenever I one game is like two or three Pokemon behind, it's probably, and I'm thinking it's because there was a bad matchup earlier in the fight that I just never bothered to switch out of when I should have. So I'm going to try and be cognizant of that in the Elite Four and set up my teams in such a way that I can hopefully fight each Elite Four member with just whoever's in my lead and then figure out some kind of switch strategy for the final rival fight. Because by that point I'll be a little bit under his levels, so I won't be able to count on just having the highest level Alkazam and winning by default, like in the yellow version. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Four Fire Red, one controller. Peace.